year is 2012. England, traditionally a land of heroes and great statesmen, is in the grip of a new regime. The country is being run by women. They are the breadwinners, the rulers, and their state police strike terror into the hearts of the subjugated male. In short, the roles have been completely reversed. It is the man, not the woman, who now wears the frock. Even their names are feminine. But one poor downtrodden worm is about to turn. This man. <laughs> Janet Cartwright. <laughs> Employed as a tea boy at police headquarters, Janet has one friend he can trust, Betty Chalmers. Our story starts one afternoon over a cup of tea. I think the secret police have heard about my collection of chauvinistic films. I'm sure the house is going to be searched any moment. Well, I have to get rid of them. I can't, you see, not before Thursday. You know, I'm having the private show in the auction rooms. It'll be the last, because it's just getting too risky. Did you know that you can get three months hard labor for showing a Humphrey Bogart? Next day in the hairdressers, Janet and Betty are surprised by a raid from the secret police. A customer by the name of Ursula Debenham. Tall, balding, with a beard. Uh, no, I don't think so. He's wanted for petty crimes against the state. Stand up! Phyllis Willis. Was that you? My father thought so. Just because he had a silly name, he gave me one. Your father? Dillis Willis. Papers. You recently shaved a beard off this man? No, ma'am. Hurry on. Then if you see or hear of this man, it's your duty to report him. What was his crime? Playing illicit rugby and pipe smoking. <laughs> Hello, Shirley, old boy. How are you? It's me. I'm just ringing up to say uh, sewing circle evening Thursday. All right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, it is. Good drying weather, though. Mine was on the line 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't got a rich wife to buy me a dryer. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it. Yes. All right, then. See you Thursday. Yes. Bye. Ye yes. Yes, Thursday. Yes, usual place. Auctioneers. Yeah, fine. fine. How's George? Is she? <laughs> Amazing woman. She's still playing left half for Brentford. <laughs> Give her a big kiss on the girl mouth for me, will you? Evening, chaps. Evening. Evening. Um, just a word before we start. Um, I'm afraid this is going to be the last film shown for a while. Oh. I know. I know it is. A show. I know. I know. But it can't help it. I'm afraid uh, I've got to go undercover. There's been a, a little dicky bird has told me there's been a bit of a leak and I might get raided. Oh. I know. So here we are. However, tonight, so make the most of it. That's what I'm really trying to say. Here. And sit back and enjoy yourself because tonight we're going to have a John Wayne film. <laughs>
Taking me in? Yes. What, to the castle? Yes. Uh, it's a rather a long journey. Do you think I might go to the toilet? All right. Well, can I take my hands down? If you must. Well, it's essential. Very difficult otherwise. <laughs> hmm. Look, would you please turn around and face the other way? No. Oh. I will. Then move. Fainted, old chap. She's dead. Dead? Well, she was only shot in the backside. You can't die of a shot in the backside. She didn't die of a shot in the backside. She died of a head down the toilet. <laughs> oh, yes. Look after both of us, Betty, old chap. They certainly are, Janet, old boy. The thing is, what are we going to do with the body? What will happen now? Are Janet and Betty doomed? Can the toilet keep its grisly secret, or will the police flush it out? <laughs> Don't miss next week's enthralling episode of The Worm That Turned.